Yep. Yeah, and uh, Daniel says Alonzo never gets the respect that he deserves, West Coast legend. That's why we're here. We're here to change that. And speaking of that, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to Alonzo and this channel, and especially you guys out there before we go on, because you guys are the reason that this channel just this week reached 10,000 subscribers. Much like, love, folks. Man, that was a milestone that we've been waiting to hit. And I promised when we when we hit 10,000, I think about a year ago, I promised that I would jump on the table and do a little dance, but I, I can't do that in my studio. But I owe you guys a dance out there for, for helping us get to 10,000. 10,000, Doc, 10,000. And, and, and I thought we'd make it last year for a while, man. We was on a hell of a roll, dude. Yeah. On a hell of a roll. On a hell of a roll. And Corona hit this, ah, breaks yeah. on everything. Yeah. So we had you know, almost, uh, yeah, we had almost 800 people join the channel just in the past 30 days. So if we keep at that rate, we'll be at 20,000, 25, 30, and 100,000 yeah. before we know it. And Alonzo will get the respect that he is due because you are correct. Um, whoever said that in chat, that, that he definitely deserves that, that, that respect. You know what? I'm, uh, let me, let me correct that. I've never been disrespected. I just don't get the recognition. Mm -hmm. That's, okay. the, that's exactly the word we're looking I've for. Never been, yeah. I, I get respect anywhere I go, okay? I've always been respected. I mean, you know, Q, my name falls out of this mouth on a regular basis. Even Casper, I don't really know, like Rand, nothing but love. I mean, um, I walked up to LL Cool J, somebody I met years ago, and hey, Lonzo, he, 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 ran, he ran down my dog on uh, my resume. So my name rings bells. It's just, I think, uh, one... I don't, I'm not Hollywood, okay? Right. I, I'm not Hollywood, okay? I'm still hood. I'm not Hollywood. I'm Hollywood, okay? Um, I I can do Hollywood, but Hollywood, you know, it takes a little, it takes, it takes, it it changes you, man. It's going to, it's going to change you, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I ain't opposed to that. Yeah. But I just want to make sure when when it changed, everything changed. My money, my address, everything got to change. I still it's hard to go Hollywood and come back to the hood. Okay, <laughs> no, it don't work like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, shout out to you. Let's uh, let's keep it going. We have a lot of stuff in the chat, but I want to get to these couple quick questions that I have, and then we'll jump into everybody's questions in the chat. So just hang on. Um, but one one thing I noticed, and a lot of people noticed, is that Ren wasn't really in the movie. You know too much he wasn't portrayed in the movie too much even though he was one a, a very big part of nwa um this is kind of a two-part question but when did you first meet mc ren and why do you think he didn't you know get a bigger part in the movie man you know what <laughs> really i do i can't recall really meeting ren until last five years you know i can't recall ren he, he probably i'm quite sure he came through the house but you got to understand uh, most of the guys in NWA, except for Q, they were introverts, man. They're introverts. They don't, they're not outgoing personalities, okay? They're real, real quiet, real laid back, even Easy. Easy was a real, laid, was a real laid back dude, man. I mean, he would sit, he would be in the house and you'd never know he was there until somebody said something to him. And if Rand showed up, he was just a laid back dude, very quiet. And um, like I said, I can't recall that there was never an incident that made me go, oh, Rand, he's a trip. We don't, I don't have a story about Rand. Mm -hmm. I have no stories about Rand. In my book, he, it's the shortest chapter in the entire book, maybe a page and a half. I, I cannot sit there and tell you, oh, yeah, we did this. No, I didn't. I, I, the brother, I know one thing I do know, we got the same birthday. Mm. Okay. Hello, uh, and Tupac, all six, June 16th. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I met him um, with Cube them a few years back on that uh, NWA and the Posse album, and uh, to give it more, more, more music. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you know that story? Because hold on, because there's a that's probably my favorite album of all time, and it's what got me to love hip hop. Uh, was that that NWA album? I remember like it was yesterday. And there were two versions. My my friend had a version where there was maybe like seven songs, and yeah. even Boys in the Hood, even Boys in the Hood sounded different. It sounded a little more raw, and then it sounded more polished in the second album. So is that what they were doing? McCullough was re explain that whole thing. McCullough was uh, he was notorious for making shit up, and. Uh, I know my boy, Dr. Rock. Dr. Rock was an OG member of, of the Eva to Dark Wrecking Crew. 
moved to Texas, met DOC, and started a group called the Feel the Fresh Crew. Okay. Um, somehow or another, I think he did a publishing deal with uh, one of the guys at McCullough, or he maybe did a master purchase deal with one of the guys at McCullough. Somehow or another, when they decided to do the uh, NWA and the Posse, they would short some songs. So they just threw on the Feel the Fresh Crew and a couple other songs they had in there. McCullough was notorious for trying to find, you know, the album back then made you more money than the EP. Okay. And I believe, if I'm mistaken, NWA and the Posse was originally an EP. Okay. That's the one that, yeah, the, like seven songs, it? six songs, seven songs. Right, like that. right, right. Uh, so they threw on the Feel the Fresh Crew, give us, uh, give us some, more, give us some more look. Same album cover. Okay. Yeah. The same album cover. So you had Jinx, you had Crazy D, you had, Coop, you had, um, um, see Chip, uh, Chip was there, I believe. Yeah, Chip. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. the only person wasn't there was it ran the NWA, ran the yellow, ran the yellow wasn't in that on that album cover. Easy was there. Um, Candyman was there. Jinx was there. Uh, Candyman's in Arizona. Jinx is in LA doing whatever he does. Crazy D, I talked to him. Um, I got to call him back. He was dealing with some health issues. And the other guys, I haven't, I haven't seen since that album cover tape, too. Damn, let's see, Rendez oh, Rendezvous? Rendezvous, right, right, uh -huh. right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm just looking at, the, I just pulled up the album right now. I'm trying to picture everybody. That was a classic album, this one. Yeah, I, he's supposed to be on my show sometime soon. We was, okay. uh, we was missing each other during the COVID. But uh, I, I ran across him finally after all this time. Because he was, he was the original artist for Ruthless Records. Very talented brother. But, um... Him and Easy um, fell out behind some money or something, or uh, contracts or whatever the case may be, and that was it for that. But I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna reach out for him. I got his number. I'm gonna reach out for him and get him on the show. Damn, I bet he has some good stories, man. That's oh dope. yeah, 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 yeah.